one. Go ahead. Hi, y'all. This is Kim Wilson of the Fabulous Thunderbirds, and you are listening to Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho. Hello once again, everyone. I'm your host, Ray Shasho, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends, brought to you by the Rockstar Chronicles Series 1, my new book featuring over 45 intimate conversations with the greatest music legends the world will ever know, available now at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. Well, for over 30 years, the fabulous Thunderbirds have been the quintessential American band. The group's distinctive and powerful sound influenced by the diversity of musical styles manifested itself into a unique musical hybrid via such barn burners as Tough Enough and Wrap It Up. Co-founder Kim Wilson, the sole original member, st still spearheads the group as it evolves into its newest incarnation. The band continues to tour extensively in both the U.S. and Europe. Wilson is currently writing songs on his own with band members and other writers. The thread throughout the T-Birds career has been the respect the group commanded for its peerless musicianship and devotion to the sounds of blues, R&B, and rock and roll. In fact, Muddy Waters called Wilson his favorite harmonica player and vocalist. Muddy Waters, Muddy Waters was very good to me, Wilson says. Uh, he almost adopted me, and I'll never forget him. In 79, the fabulous Thunderbirds released their first self-titled album, uh, primarily blues influence. It became a cult classic. Things were wide open back then, Wilson recalls. There were hundreds of stages where bands could show what they had. In subsequent releases, the band started to incorporate more Cajun, rock and roll, and soul influences. The album T-Bird Rhythm marked a creative turning point for, uh, for the group as it collaborated with noted producer Nick Lowe. In 1986, the fabulous Thunderbirds reached a commercial peak with the album Tough Enough, the single of the same title as well as the singles Wrap It Up and Look At That all went to top 40. The song Tough Enough was featured in the film Gung Ho starring Michael Keaton. For the remainder of the 80s, the band continued to record and tour and release the album Powerful Stuff. Jimmy Vaughn left in 1989, but Wilson kept the group going, incorporating keyboards into the guitar-driven sound. Kim moved back to California in 1996, continuing to cultivate the T-Birds music. The thing about the T-Birds is that we can play both a blues festival and rock venues, Wilson comments. We're a diversified band now, and everybody's on the same page. Please welcome American blues singer and harmonica player, best known as the lead vocalist and frontman for the fabulous Thunderbirds, Kim Wilson, to interviewing the legends. Hello, Kim. Hiya, hiya, hiya. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny? The last time we chatted, you were actually cooking breakfast in the kitchen while we did the interview. <laughs> wow. You have a good memory. And you know what? That might be a that, that might be a you what was on the menu. <laughs> I'm sure it was good, whatever it was. But that must be a blues thing, because I interviewed Beth Hart and she did the same thing. <laughs> oh. That's amazing. <laughs> now you know why anyway, I got you were wrong about over thirty years. It's over forty five. It's over forty five now. Yeah, I need to update that. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> Just facts. Just facts, exactly. You, you know why? what reminded me to get you on the show today, not only do you have some shows coming up in Florida in the, in the future, but my wife and I were watching Tough Guys the other day with Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas, and of course you got a song in there. You got Tough Enough in that, in that uh, movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a big honor, I gotta say, with both those guys in that movie. I think it was the last movie they ever did. I think you're right. And, uh, yeah, so it, it was a big honor because I'm a huge, a huge fan of both of those actors. Oh, so am I, man. I mean, it fit, it fit the movie to a T. It really did. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, 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 you know, we've, I, we've been fortunate to have uh, songs in many, many, many movies. And uh, it, it really helps, especially when you, uh, like you say, Gung Ho, that was a big one for us. Yeah. And Tough Guys. And I think they were the, Tough Enough was actually in another movie besides that. I can't remember what it was. But, uh, uh, you know, it always helps. It's, it's the best form of promotion, isn't it? When you get the uh, free promotion in a, in a big movie. And uh, so 
Oh, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. So what's going on with the T-Birds nowadays? I know you got you got a, uh, a kind of a mini tour going on. I'm sure you'll probably expand that. Uh, we, we've all been affected by COVID and especially the music business. It, it's, it's really sucked for a while. So what, what's happening with you guys? Well, it's gradually coming back. You know, I mean, uh, now we have to decide if we want to go because uh, COVID is still an issue out there. It is. And, and it's, it's a problem. Uh, you know, of course, I've been vaccinated and the whole band has. Right. But, you know, it, it's one of those things where do I even want to get remotely sick? Do I want to be playing to an audience that uh, might have a lot of people unvaccinated? And, and yeah. do I want to, you know, do I want them to spread it between each other? Because it's, it's common knowledge that if you're vaccinated, you got very little chance of even going to the hospital, let alone dying. So right. that's one of those things where you, you kind of weigh your options and... Uh, Take it from there, but but however, not but however, <laughs> we are working more. Good, and uh, you know I'm uh, I have uh, a, a couple of I have a kind of a lengthy two week tour where I'm working tw- <coughs> excuse me twelve days in a row mm-hmm. on the East Coast in September. Right, so I'm deciding what I'm going to do there. But that's with the blues band. That's not with the Thunderbirds. Okay. Thunderbirds are, are, are now the Thunderbirds are working, uh, like you say, in Florida. Mm-hmm. Three or four days now in Florida in January. Right. And uh, then I've got another thing with Mark Humble happening, uh, the harmonica blowdown. Then I have uh, uh, several dates in California after that in January. So January's full. That's mm-hmm. a good thing. And we'll see what happens after that. Um, are you going to work on a new album with the T-Birds, or I, I know I'm going to talk about your solo, your last solo album, which is fantastic, by the way. I gave it five stars. But anything, anything Thank cooking you. with anything cooking with the T-Birds as far as a new album? Oh, oh yeah, we're, yeah. You know, we're we're writing for it right now, Good. and, and uh, my, my bass player Steve Gomes and I have. Uh, well, it's been a, it's been a few months ago now when we were writing at my house out here in California. Right, and we we got some good stuff in the works it's just a matter of when we're going to do it it's a matter of uh, how many guest artists that we want on this record because that that was the idea put some guest artists on it you know some high profile guest artists and so i'll be calling in my favors i already have somewhat but um uh, how much of that do we want to rely on you know right because in my mind, when this band's on all eight cylinders, basically we're just doing the guest artist for the fun, not for the promotion of it. You right, know? Right. Although it works both ways. And I think that uh, I can't really divulge who will be on this new CD, but uh, all I can tell you is I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I've got a lot of really generous friends out there. You know, I'm really impressed by how many different blues players there are nowadays. You know, I mean, it's not going around, not going away. Blues is getting getting stronger than ever, man. There's a lot of young young guys out there uh, playing the blues and great guitar players. You know. Yeah, I agree. There's this kid in uh, uh, he goes to Middle Tennessee State. He's still in college. He's a young guy. Uh, and he, he, he's uh, his name is Mac McDonald. Uh huh. Sean Sean Mac McDonald. I, I really like this kid. I think he's going to go far. I mean, right now he's in college. He can't do many gigs, but I, you, you hear him on uh, Facebook playing. You know, he just got a new guitar. And I'm I'm, I'm kind of buddies with him now, <coughs> and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, employ him at least in the blues band at some point. So we'll see what happens. But he, this guy's got a lot of talent. And uh, there's this other guy, uh, uh, Quan Willis, mm-hmm. who actually got nominated for a Grammy a couple of years ago, or uh, maybe last year. And he, he's another one. He's more of an acoustic artist. And uh, he's got this harmonica player with him named uh, Andrew Ali, who's another up-and-comer. So 
there are some people uh, I'm happy to see uh, African Americans playing this music again and young ones uh, there's also this kid Marquis Knox mm -hmm. in uh, he's out of St. Louis so there are a few there are a few playing that are really going to be something I, I, I'm very impressed with what they're doing and I think uh, yeah, like you say, it's going in the right direction. It's going in the right direction, exactly. We we got a local guy. Uh, he's also half. He's also Cuban. I'm half Cuban, so I got along very well. And, you know, Albert Castilla. He's a good. He's a really good blues player. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I love that. I love him. Albert's I, good. He's, yeah. He's a he's a buddy of mine also. Yep. I had him uh, on the show, you know, and he does a lot of shows here in Florida, as well. You know, I'm, I'm, I've got uh, some Cuban in my family also. Oh, awesome. Oh, very good. But they, uh, they actually married into my family. <laughs> and uh, one guy that was uh, my, my Uncle Leo right. was uh, Uncle Leo Gonzalez. Uh -huh. And uh, he was a an engine balancer for uh, race car drivers and he did it out of his garage wow and he actually balanced the winning the winning car at the indy 500 huh the guy's name the guy's name was tom steva i don't know if you remember him but it was quite a while ago wow but he did it out of his garage i had uh, my uncle fred rosello who uh he married my the, both of them uh, married my dad's sisters so I'm, I'm familiar with uh, somewhat, at least, with the Cuban culture. And, uh, of course, I love it. I love, uh, I love anyone who, who has uh, a Hispanic background. I, I think that the Hispanic people have a lot of soul. I think they, they know what skill is. I don't really know. It might be a generalization, but I don't know very many Hispanic people that at least doesn't have one or two people in their family who can't... Uh, uh, who can't sing or play an instrument true. well? Yeah, that's and true. So, uh, yeah. I'm really, I'm, I, I would like to actually uh, kind of dwell on the Hispanic culture as far as my fan base, right? Because I think that they really, they're all into. They know, like I said, they know what skill is, they know what soul is, and, and uh, that's what I want to tap into. Oh, the music is incredible. You know, I mean, doesn't matter what part of the country, Hispanic-wise, there are there are all. You know, I love I love Cuban music, especially the salsa. And uh, I grew up in in my household uh, with. Uh, oh my gosh, there goes my mind. Um, you know the, the uh, what's her name? Asuka. She says Asuka. Uh, well, my mind's gone right now. Anyway. You know, I'm a big fan of the uh, Ibrahim uh, Ferrer. Right, uh, right. He was on that. Uh, I tell you, uh, uh, Ry Cooter did a great film, uh, the um, the Social Club. Uh, That's right. Uh, and that that was a great film, a great film. I mean, the, he he really he really recultivated those people's careers, and they were all over the world for a while, but they were already very old. Yeah. But they had kind of been forgotten in Cuba. I know. And that kind of re that revived what, uh, uh, revived all of their careers. And I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, I have a lot of that stuff. A lot of that, uh, the old Ibrahim Ferrer stuff mm -hmm. is incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, but people like, you know, Tito Puente and... Right. and uh, uh, Oh God, my mind's going to a <laughs> I, I, I was trying to think of uh, Perez Prado. Perez Prado. I was trying to think of Celia Cruz. That's when my mind went. <laughs> Celia Cruz is fantastic, of course. Yeah. And uh, so I mean, then you have the stuff in uh, you know the the, the the out of Mexico, you know. Uh, and, oh, oh God, <laughs> I can't remember her name either, but. Um, <laughs> I will. I, I was just thinking of it, and I interrupted myself. Oh, but, from Mexico, uh, yeah. Uh, the the Tex-Mex stuff was great. A right. lot of accordion in that music, which uh, actually came from uh, when the Germans moved to Texas. The the Mexican people adapted the uh, accordion into their music. Right. That, that accordion is all buttons. It's 
about keys. Huh. The greatest key accordion player, of course, was Clifton Chenier. Mm-hmm. And he, he was, uh, I saw him play many, many times in a lot of different places, but in Antones. And he was, <laughs> he, he was just the best. <laughs> Everybody else played buttons. He played keys. Hmm. So, well, the, 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 great, the greatest harp player on the planet is Kim Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very nice of you to say. It, it's true. I, you know, it, you know, I've, I've really, uh, I've had a great run, like you say. Money yeah. Waters was, was, was kind of my adopted father, but I've had people like uh, Jimmy Rogers. He was mm-hmm. kind of my adopted uncle. And then you know, I have cousins like Albert Collins. Wow. And uh, Luther Tucker and, and uh, Eddie Taylor was more like an uncle. Mm-hmm. He, you know, I have to say Muddy was was the kind of adopted father, though. He was very, very generous with me. But I played with just about all of them. Yeah. You no, know, there's, there's not very many people that I haven't worked with. And unfortunately, here I am. Now, Buddy Guy, there's a guy who's still alive. Yeah, that's and, right. And also Billy Boy Arnold. Yep. Not very many of them are alive. No. A buddy Guy just turned 85. Wow. It's amazing how he looks for 85. He I looks great. How, how great he looks. He looks wonderful. He, he's yeah. my buddy, the, no, yeah. no pun intended. And, and uh, <laughs> these guys have been like family members to me yeah. over the years. Uh, I'm, I'm so blessed to have been able to work with them. And uh, actually, Jimmy Rogers, I produced a record on him that won, uh, won a, uh, uh, at that time, it was a WC Handy Award. Now they're called the, the BMAs, but mm-hmm. um, I prefer WC Handy. I like that name. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the Handy family took it away. <laughs> but, um, you know, all these, it, it's, it's so rare. And I also work with the Big Jack Johnson and was on one of his records. I was one of the principals on that record. It's great to be able to even remotely pay back these guys who have been so generous with me over the years Mm -hmm. and really took me under their wing. And by example, showed me what to do and what not to do sometimes. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) They, they were. It was incredible. I have no regrets. Mm-hmm. You know, I have no regrets at all. I got a little crazy when I was a kid. We all did. And that's, <laughs> that was part of it. You know. You you, ha- you have to have a little bit of devil in you to really go through life, and you know, I mean, it, it's good. It's good. Uh, you know, experience is what I look at it. Uh, I don't know about devil, but at least eccentricity. <laughs> Uh, I bet you didn't even know I knew that word. (laughs) Yeah, I'm surprised. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, it it was, uh, you know, the beautiful thing about all those guys, uh, it's something that you don't see much anymore. Yeah. Uh, They were all characters. They were all uh, very original in their personalities, very original characters. There was nothing generic about them. And uh, that's what made blues the blues. Yeah. No, that's what everyone, I think it really goes back to trains instead of airplanes. Right, right. They were were truly regional sounds. Exactly right. That happened and and it really was separated by the train stations and by the, you know, the regions of the south, of course, and then... uh, it went up to Memphis and St. Louis, then to Chicago and L.A. Yep. and places like Cincinnati, where there were big scenes. And, and uh, of course, I'm playing the uh, King Biscuit Blues Festival in Helena, Arkansas again this year. Oh, great! And and that was a huge, huge, huge music scene back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a big, it was a big port, believe it or not. And they had, uh, it was on the Mississippi, I think it's on the Mississippi, yeah. Well, the Mississippi, and, and uh, it, it, it was a huge uh, trade center for big, big, big companies. And a lot of stuff came up by boat. That's not there anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, that's where that music scene 
started, mm -hmm. and usually that's what happens when, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there are jobs, and when where there are jobs, there is a lot of music, and yeah. people who are working in the ports, they, they come to see the music, and, and uh, that's where people, like uh, up in Chicago, for instance, I mean, of course, it, it, it wasn't a port, but uh, there were a lot of jobs, and uh, of course, relative freedom for people from the South. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, you know, of course, uh, I'm not sure we're seeing the end result, at least yet. You know, of course, you know, we, we have a lot of uh, bad things happening in this country still. But, of course, and, and uh, uh, hopefully that is coming to the forefront now. Mm -hmm. uh, it remains to be seen if it will, but uh, you know, uh, it's crazy that people can be considered inferior because of the color of their skin. <clears throat> that doesn't sit well. It never has sat, sat well with me, and of course, and, and uh, but I will say this: that people like Muddy Waters and the BB King mm -hmm. and uh, Buddy Guy and, and all the great people, uh, they at least know and knew where they stood right. in the pecking order of music. Oh yeah, it was sure. A big thing. Yeah. Yeah, even even rock and roll like Chuck Berry and Little Richard, you know those guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like like you said, when, uh, Alan Freed was mm -hmm. was a big uh, promoter of black music, and there was a period in the beginning when it was separated. Yeah, it, the the room was separated down the middle, and then until people started interacting at these. And finally, they just said, "No, nah, we're not going to do this." And a few people got arrested, and, but uh, you know, they said, "This is it. We're going to mingle." Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you've seen that that movie, uh, "Summer of Soul." Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, it, it was. That's an incredible movie. I tell you, you talk about some empowered yep. African American people. Yep. Uh, that that it's incredible how beautiful those people are, mm -hmm. and it's not incredible; it's fantastic. And I think that uh, uh, it's weird that it happened the same day that Woodstock happened, mm -hmm. which was nothing but filthy debauchery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody everybody plays it up, but it was uh, you know if you look at some of the articles, my son. You're breaking up a little bit. To mention a couple of things. First of all, um, congratulations on being nominated. Um, the, it's the Independent Blues Awards. Oh yeah. And you've been nominated for Traditional Blues CD, Male Artist, Traditional Blues Band, Traditional Blues Song. And I voted for you, by the way. 
Thank you very much. <laughs> Already took care of that. <laughs> And your album, your solo album, uh, Take Me Back, I mean, that got criti critically acclaimed, man. You got a lot of great reviews from that album. I did, yeah. And, and the one prior to that, also, Blue yeah. Boogie Volume 1. You know, I, in hindsight, I kind of wished I would have named it, uh, this record instead of Take Me Back, Blues and Boogie Volume 2. I think people got a little confused because right. I, I was saying that there was going to be a volume of but that's what this is. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, listen, I had a, a great time. I've, I've recorded hundreds and hundreds of tracks, and uh, it's just a great experience cutting things to mono and analog mm -hmm. and cutting them live. No overdubs. So uh, I was very proud. I'm very proud of both of these projects. Uh, and uh, the next one is going to be a, uh, my next solo CD is going to be a uh, an album dedicated to New Orleans music. Oh, cool! And uh, I think we're going to be going down to New Orleans actually to record at least some of it. And we have some some great players interested. I until they get totally confirmed, I can't really divulge mm -hmm. what that is either. But uh, there are some of the greats that. Uh, are experts in this kind of music. Um, it just so happens I have an affinity for singing this kind of music. There won't be very much harmonica, if any, on this record. Really? So I'm, I'm, huh. Yeah. It's, it's all singing. Huh. And that, that's, uh, you know, uh, I feel like uh, I've been somewhat neglected as uh, how people think of me as a singer. Mm -hmm. And this, this will uh, at least somewhat lay, lay that to rest. Oh, you're an incredible singer, man. You are. Thank you. Yeah. I, you know, I, I told you what, this once before, and this might jar your memory of our last interview. I told you when you sang Tough Enough, when I heard it the first time on the radio, I thought it was Tom Jones. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's, that's praise. You know, that's high praise. Tom Jones is a fantastic singer. Yeah. Your and, voice. And uh, <laughs> he actually cut one of my songs that I wrote with Steve Jordan. That's cool. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now. I'm not even sure if it came out, but he did record it. He might, it might have come out. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, sometimes there's so many of these instances that, you know, you don't even remember how many <laughs> records you've been on. I know. Uh, hundreds. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard it's, to keep it's up. It's insane how many records I've been on. Yeah. But uh, mostly for harmonica. And uh, I know Robert Cray just cut one of our tracks off. Oh, great. So, so that, you know. Uh, that, that's really nice when uh, people uh, record a song that you've written and people that you respect. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's a perk in this industry. And, you know, I mean, I'm a long way from, uh, what's her name? God, I can't remember her name either. But she was a huge songwriter. Right. Carol right. King. Carol, Carol King, yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, she was, <laughs> uh, she was in the sweat box every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with those guys. I, I guarantee you, she was enjoying herself. <laughs> I think enjoyable. so. You know, it, yeah. writing a song is almost like having a baby yeah. you know, without the pain. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, that's your baby. And, yeah. uh, you know, when something like Tough Enough gets into the top ten, uh, it's, it, it was a big deal for me. Oh, sure. And, and uh, I'm very, very uh, proud of that. Mm -hmm. And I was just a kid when I sang that song, really. I mean, I wasn't anything like I am now as far as a singer. But I think you're better. I, you know, I, I am better now. <laughs> you know, way better. I mean, you're not supposed to get worse. <laughs> but, you know, well, uh, Sam, Sam Moore of Sam and Dave fame. Yeah. Uh, I was having lunch with them one one day with, with him, mm. and he said, oh, because I was, you know, I'm a huge fan of his, obviously. Right. Oh, you're a stylist. <laughs> <laughs> and that was kind of a left-handed compliment, but it's true. Yeah. I mean, he goes, well, when you open your mouth, people know it's you. Exactly. And, uh, yep. So that that's cool. You got the trademark. I want to be a little more than a stylist. <laughs> I'll take that from Sam Moore, believe me. 
Your vocals on this album is incredible, man. It, it, let me tell you, when I, after, I, after I listened to this album, I decided I want to buy a 1956 Chevy Bel Air convertible and start cruising. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds good to me, too. I, you know, my dad actually worked for GM. Oh, cool. And, uh, yeah. That, that was the one car that we kept. Really? My mom loved that car. It wasn't a convertible. Mm -hmm. It was a four, oh, no, it might have been a two-door. But it was a, a 56 uh, Baby Blue Bel Air. Baby Blue, yeah. Yeah, it was stock, beautiful. We had that car for quite a while. My yep. dad would, would get a new car every year because that was part of his of deal. Of course. You know, he was, yeah. uh, uh, my dad was an interesting story. He, was, he didn't graduate from high school, but he started working uh, for GM when he was 16 years old. Yeah. And he ended up being a, a draftsman and uh, helping design the wheel for the lunar car. Hmm. So, you know, follow your dreams, people. Sure. Because, you know, you, you, you can live your dreams. There's no question. I'm a prime example of that. Oh, yeah. You know, you had been down, it wasn't easy. It's still not easy at times. Right. But let me tell you, it, it's you know, very satisfying. Th this album... Um, you've got um, nine reworkings of tunes from Jimmy Nolan, uh, Helen Wolf, Larry Williams, Little Walter, Jimmy Rogers, uh, and, and you have about what seven originals on the album. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What I didn't know, mo uh, most of, a lot of these songs were written uh, by Jimmy Rogers. And is Jimmy yeah. Rogers, is he the same guy that was in the James, uh, guitar player, Jimmy Rogers, that was in, with James Brown? Is that the same guy? No, no, that, that's Jimmy Nolan. That's Jimmy Nolan, okay. That's Jimmy Nolan. No, I'm, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was in the original Muddy Waters band. Right. And, uh, he recorded for Chess Records. He, he, he was a very dear friend of mine, and he's, uh, it's an incredible vocal style. It's just what happens that, that uh, I just love his material. I love his voice. I love everything about Jimmy Rogers, really. You know, I mean, uh, he was a really great guy, another very generous man, and, and someone that uh, uh, I will always cherish his friendship. And uh, we, we <coughs> did some cutting up together, too. You know, I mean, he was... Uh, I, I like to say that Jimmy Rogers was an instigator. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and, you know, we, we had some, all I can tell you is we had some times. That's for sure. Now, now Jimmy Nolan, though, wasn't he, he, he was a guitar player, right? Jimmy Nolan? He was a guitarist, yeah. And then he kind of morphed into, he was a great blues player and a great singer, actually. Right. And um, he kind of morphed into this, he, he invented that style of guitar. <laughs> a style of, of uh, it's, it's called chicken scratch, or chicken scratch, or something like that. It, no, it, it, it's it's not really. It's just uh, I guess you could call it kind of scratching sometimes. Right. But he was uh, it was that soul kind of style of guitar, mm -hmm. which really comes out of church. But uh, it, it kind of morphed between blues and soul and church. You know, it would get. And James Brown used him on everything. Exactly. So, yeah. And so uh, he was on all the big hits and all the small hits. He right. was a, he, he was a huge force, and it's incredible. He didn't. He, he wasn't a soloist anymore, but he was a very huge part of that stuff mm -hmm. of that of, of James Brown's music. Huge. Yeah, uh, it, it wouldn't have happened in the same way without it. I, I love the way you pay homage to these guys, because if you if somebody like you or me doesn't do it, you you know sometimes they get a little lost, you know. Uh, and and I mean I, I looked up uh, Jimmy Nolan, man. They, they guy's done so much for music, you know. Yeah, he really oh, yeah. has. I mean, if you go if you go on the, the Jasmine Records has come out with many, many, many great compilations, and uh, they have a compilation of his blues work. It's a double CD, 
that that pretty much encompasses everything that he did. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it'll blow your mind. Yeah, it'll, it'll blow your mind. I don't. I'm not sure if it's absolutely everything, but it's very, very close. Right. And uh, you know, he worked with this guy Monty Easter, who was kind of a jazz slash R and B trumpet player. And even some of that stuff is on this compilation. But uh, it, it's it's uh, he was incredible. I should cover more stuff by him, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. But uh, that's the only thing I've ever covered by him. Yeah. And, I'm uh, glad you did. Was, we were just in the studio one day and said, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that song. And we, you know, a couple takes, you're done. Mm -hmm. And if it comes out, okay. If it doesn't, so be it. Right, right, right. <laughs> because there's no mixing. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. There's no mixing. It's all live in the studio. You know, you can adjust levels slightly because it's in mono. Right. So when you just when you just adjust some EQ or stuff like that, you can raise levels a little bit. But um, you know, I have to say, Big John Atkinson and and uh, Nathan James, uh, they were instrumental in the in the sound of these records. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of, to know both of them. Well, I'm going to mention some of my favorite tracks. F Fine Little Woman, uh, Great Harp, of course, on every track. Beautiful, be but great blues song. Another, I guess, another Jimmy Nolan tune, right? I wrote that one. Oh, you wrote, I wrote that, that, one. that one. Oh, wow. That, that's incredible. It's, I mean, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're songwriting, man. You go, it's like the 50s all over again. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, you're not. Uh, I try and write to where you can't tell the difference between the great songs written by other people. Incredible. And stuff that I write. Incredible. You know, what, um, I'm a big fan of BB King's also. Right. Of course. Yeah. Big fan of his guitar playing and his voice. And BB King was, at the time, the greatest doing both things. Mm hmm. Uh, I, 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 this Peavine box set that came out that's a Japanese label that does a great job of remastering to digital because everything starts as analog mono and his RPM uh, Kent stuff it, it's all of it it's like 317 <laughs> CDs um, you know it, it's an incredible box but uh, anyway uh, I'm well, I always think of him. I always yeah. think of him when I compare my songwriting right. to other people. You know, there's another great guy that we haven't mentioned yet, and that's Gabe Mouth Brown. Oh, yeah. Gabe Mouth Brown. Yep. Jasmine also came out with a, the complete Duke Peacock mm -hmm. uh, recordings on him, and it's like 45 tracks. But when you think of it, that's a lot of music. That is and, a lot of music. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Game Mouth was one of the guys who did not knock off anything from B.B. King. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, there are very few of those. And you, you listen to, you know, Buddy Guy's another one of my favorite guitarists, and he's a big hero of mine. And he, he you can hear him, even though he's doing it in his own way. You can hear him. But Buddy Guy was a huge fan of BB King, mm -hmm. huge. But um, um, Buddy Guy was radical. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. He was a radical guitarist. Yeah. Uh, I'm really. Uh, I'm not, uh, it's been a pleasure to know him mm -hmm. also over the years. Uh, but thank God he's still around. But. Uh, you know, there are just so many, many, many people mm -hmm. to be influenced by. Uh, I will say this to young musicians, be influenced by all of them. Mm -hmm. Don't dwell with one guy. Right, right. You know, it, it, that way, uh, everything that gets stored in your memory banks, uh, there's not one, you know, of course, little Walter as harmonica is my mm -hmm. biggest influence, but I'm influenced by everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, so when you finally spit it out, because it's all improvisation, you know, sure. you finally spit it out. No one can tell really where you're coming from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who that is? You know, George Harmonica Smith, James Cotton. Oh, those two guys were my two big influences mm -hmm. as well. And uh, Big Walter Horton, Rice Miller, who is Sonny Boy Williamson number mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. um, he was also a huge influence to me. So the, if you're influenced by a lot of different people, 
uh, it comes out like you, basically. Yeah. yeah. Like, it comes like it comes out like you a lot easier if you were dwelling on one person. Yep. But then you're going to be then you're going to be sounding like that person. What you got to realize is there's no way you can sound exactly like any of these guys. Yeah. And uh, the, it's great to have your influence this show, but trying to knock off solos and stuff like that, that only happens when you're a kid. Right, right. Okay, right. and, and he, you, there's no way you can knock off solos. Oh, and by the way, those solos only happen one time mm -hmm. in the studio mm -hmm. for that for that particular song. Yeah. They never played it like that again. Yeah. They never knocked, they never tried to knock themselves off. Maybe a head like Juke, for instance, by Little Walter, and, uh, you know, and even the, even the the head on later, uh, well, and on alternate takes of Juke uh, was different. Mm -hmm. So, be your own person. Influences that's fine. Influences. Uh, uh, someone told me once I was I'm one of the old guys. I'm not sure who it was, but if if you didn't play something by somebody else, you wouldn't be playing anything. <laughs> That's true. That's kind of true. <laughs> I like uh, that. So you, you know, be proud of your influence yeah. and, 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 and move on. You yeah. know, I mean, you can play traditional music, which is what this, uh, which was, which is what "Take Me Back" is. But you can be your own person within the idiom of traditional <clears throat> music. Sure. I had um, I had Lee Oscar on the show. Have you ever played one of his harmonicas? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're good harmonicas. Are they? They're good harmonicas. Yeah. They're tuned a little bit weird for me. Right, right. But, uh, you know, my guy is Joe Felisco. Okay. Uh, and he he's an, he's an engineer and a great harmonica player, by the way. Right. Me. Huh. But uh, his, his harmonicas, there's no way you can duplicate his harmonicas. Now, what I do is... The harmonicas used to be marine bands. They used to be throwaways, mm -hmm. right? Right. When when they go out of tune. Well, right. now what I do is I take the Felisco harmonicas that are that are, have gone flat, and I send them back to Felisco, <laughs> and he tweaks them for me and sends them back to me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. I have I have harmonicas uh, that go all the way back to 1999. Wow. And he starts with pre-war harmonicas to begin with. Really? I don't know how he got a hold of that, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I'm a freak for this kind of stuff. <laughs> of course, you have to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, some other tunes I love. Uh, you definitely don't slow down on Slow Down on that track. That's another favorite of mine. <laughs> That's a good one, yes. <laughs> uh, no Place to Go, of course. Another big, big one. That's a, what, a Helen Wolf tune, right? Helen Wolf yep. cover? Yeah. yeah. That's great. You did an yeah. incredible job on that. Uh, stra you. Strange things happening. Another one. What? That's a favorite. Uh, I love this. I love this title. Money, marbles, and chalk. I mean, <laughs> that's that's Jimmy Rogers. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, that's a great one. That's a great one there. And and, and your heart playing on and run rumbling, man. That's wow. Next yeah. level. Next yeah. level. That's a chromatic. Yeah. That's the big one. That's the big one, right? Yep. And you wrote, didn't you write out of a frying pan? Is that your tune? Yep. That's your tune. All the instrumentals I wrote. Yeah. That's a great album, man. You should be very proud of that. You, I mean, I went on Amazon. I can't believe all the, the, the comments. The incredible comments. Uh, it's definitely critically acclaimed. It's a great, great album. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. I think actually it might be up for a Grammy this year. Because it deserves it. Not it. In late last year. It deserves it. It, it should it get was, the Grammy. It was submitted anyway. I don't know if we'll make the final cut. I but, hope you uh, get it. <clears throat> I really hope you get it, man. Well, yeah, it would be nice. I've been nominated for a few of them. I've never won. Yeah. So I'm, 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 uh, I'm overdue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you know, you were mentioning B.B. King. I'm friends with Shirley King, uh, his daughter, and I've also interviewed Claudette. And it's so cool to just uh, rap with these guys, these late, beautiful ladies. 
about the history of B.B. King and there's so much I, I've learned from then about their dad you know what a nice guy he was and you know yeah no he was incredible in, in, in every phase and uh he was uh, actually got to record on a bb king album mm -hmm. uh, it was a blues summit it was called right it had a lot had a lot of people on there you know Robert Cray, I know, is on there. We've got several other people. Johnny Hooker's on it. But, uh, uh, you know, he was always very kind. And uh, I, I was on tour with BB two or three times. So uh, that was a very fortunate thing to be able to interact with him. One, that one year for BB's birthday, I bought him the complete T Bone Walker. Oh, yeah on Mosaic Records, and boy, was he ever thrilled with that. <laughs> he, he just loved it. He, he, he had, you know, he was a T-Bone disciple, actually. Really? But, you know, he took it, he, he took it and ran with it, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. A very sweet guy. Your, um, your early recordings from the, um, the band, you had two producers, that Nick Lowe and Dave Edmonds, is that right? That, that kind of yep. helped? Yeah, that's pretty cool. The first guy, the first guy was uh, uh, Bob Sullivan. Right. Uh, up, up, up there at Summit Burnett Studios in Dallas. And uh, he was great, too. Of course, you know, uh, I'm big fans of both Lowe and Edmonds. Me, too. And we, yeah. had, we had been on tour with them, and they were kind enough to agree to produce a record each. Yeah, it was a big thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, Edmonds had a hot hand. He had just gotten through doing the Stray Cats. Right. And so they had some success. So he was a hot producer at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think that really helped, uh, you know, cement the success Plus, we had been on the road for so long, and pe people were looking for something like that out of us. And uh, you know, it was it was uh, it, we delved into the actual music business. So I think we were at that time. I think the, the that that type of the type of music business. We were the last, some of the last ones, actually, to experience it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, uh, you, you can't, do, you don't see that anymore. No, you, you don't. don't see big labels doing that kind of thing anymore. I mean, of course, you talk about, I don't know, some of these people who play kitty pop, mm -hmm. maybe, but, you know, that, that was the last real record business kind of, that went a little while longer than that, but it, it, was, it became, uh, it became kind of obsolete. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, they, so. Yeah, I miss I those days. Still have, major labels are still there, but yeah. I don't know who they're supporting, you know. I miss those days. Kim, Kim uh, here's a question I probably asked you before a long time ago, but I get some interesting answers. And ironically, this Thursday, they're playing a game at Field of Dreams, uh, which is going to be very, very cool. So the question is, if you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, uh, to perform or collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who, who would that be? I say it again, you're kind of breaking up too. Okay. Uh, if you had a Field of Dreams wish to perform, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? I mean, I've just about done it. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I tell you what, I would like to record with Muddy. I never got a chance to do that. Right. And uh, we were we were talking about it right before he died, and then he passed. Yeah. And um, uh, that was a sad, one of the saddest days of my life. But uh, I would like to have made that come to fruition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, uh, I, I got to interview Johnny also before he passed, and, uh, you know, I mean, 
nobody worked harder than he did. You know, I mean, it's just not the same without Johnny Winter touring. You know, it it doesn't feel right. Yeah, uh, Johnny, he was yeah. Uh, that's a sad thing about albinos. They yeah. don't live long. Right. And uh, unfortunately, Edgar is still there. Yeah, he is. Incredible. I don't know how old he is, but uh, yep. you know, he just just. Uh, that was a sad day too. You know, I interviewed Edgar the day before Johnny died. That was, it was just kind of weird. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. And he talked a lot about his brother that day too. Yep. Beaumont, Texas. That's where they're from. Yep. That's right. Kim, you got anything else you need to promote or, or uh, talk about? Well, you know, just keep an eye on our calendar. You can go to fabulousthunderbirds.com and and uh, you can get our whole schedule right there. It's just ever-evolving, ever-changing, and so you need to stay on top if you want to get on top of it. You sure. Know, just, uh, go there, and you'll see everything. Well, so far, the Florida dates, you've got November 20th this year. That's at Port St. Uh, Port St. Lucie, and then January, the date you were talking about, that's at North uh, Ponte v uh, Vedra, which is near Jacksonville. And uh, oh, there's 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 a couple more after that. Good. I remember. It, it'll be on the website. You know, I'm in I'm in the Sarasota area. I used to come here for the Blues Fest all the time. Yeah, you know, things have just changed. I yeah. Mean, it's, it's, uh, and they're not going to get back to totally normal. I mean, I just heard that they canceled the uh, New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival next year again. Oh man! So I mean, it's, it's it's we're not out of the woods by any means. Yeah. And I think that uh, no matter what you think, what your politics are, go get the shots. Exactly, you and have to. Then, you, then you're going to be able to right. see people working. Exactly right. Because it's really it really hinders guys like me to go out and work when you know the, right. it's just going crazy like it is right now. I agree with you 100 percent, man. I got my shots. My whole family did. Now they're talking about a booster, so we'll see what happens yep. with that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'll, I'll be the first in line for it. Me too. No. I agree. Kim, thank you, man, for being on the show today. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, we'll stay in touch. I want to, you know, find out all about. It. I'm looking forward to the the uh, the next uh, Thunderbirds album and another one from you. Uh, like I said, I love the album. It's, if I could give it more than five stars, I would. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And the album just puts me in a great mood, man. I just want to take off and you know just drive the countryside and, and listen to that album man it's great it's wonderful i appreciate it man thank you very much all right kim thank you so much stay safe and uh you got you know, my number i got it number. all right man thank you so much all right, all right take care bye-bye bye-bye purchase kim wilson's most recent solo album which i gave it five stars and should be more uh it's called take me back the big tone sessions on mc records and it's available at amazon.com for more information about Kim Wilson and the Fabulous Thunderbirds, visit www.fabulousthunderbirds.com, their official website. They are also on Facebook, Twitter, www.twitter.com backslash thunderfabulous. They're also um, on Instagram at www.instagram.com backslash fabulous T-Birds. Very special thanks to Glenn Parrish of GP Management for arranging this interview with Kim Wilson. If you have comments or suggestions for the show, you can always contact me at interviewingthelegends at gmail.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Interviewing the Legends with Ray Shasho, for the very latest interviews. It's real news, people. And, of course, my best-selling book entitled The Rockstar Chronicles, Series 1. I am currently working on Series 2. It chronicles truths. Confessions and wisdom from the music legends that set us free. You can order yours today on the collector's edition hardcover or ebook at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. It features over 45 intimate conversations with some of the greatest rock legends the world will ever know. 
Book Review, Literary Titan gave it five stars. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next time on Interviewing the Legends. Take care. Stay healthy. Bye-bye now.